what David sung in the Psalms was his personal stuff. God, how could this happen? These guys did this. What have I ever done wrong? And then there's other songs. Say, uh, say for example, when uh, Moses and that came out of the Red Sea, they actually wrote a song that everybody learnt and sung together. Um, what a beautiful thing to do. That's corporate. It's still an express, but it was about what God did. And they sang it to remember it, that they would never lose it. I mean, imagine the stress and the fear when they're on this side of the Red Sea and Pharaoh's coming and then a wall of fire comes around which they go, why is God burning us to death? Is this massive flames coming? Not realising it's keeping them safe. Then the seas part, they're like, oh my God, there's this rushing wind and dry land and, and they're all running and, I mean, was it odd? Were, were they all Maybe oh, it's the water over there. Let's just walk down this. Or were they like running and panicking and trying not to trample one another? But when they get out the other side, the joy they would have felt like Pharaoh's whole army I mean, he couldn't just block them off because they'd go round. He was mad. His son just died. God had to destroy them um, if he was going to save his people. And he did it for his glory. And they remembered it in song for his glory. So I guess I haven't really spoken a lot about what our, our closet worship's like. But we're going to play with that as a concept for a second uh, in a couple of minutes' time. But I just wanted to draw one kind of a bit of a graph thing to kind of um, give you an idea about what worship's like with people's emotions. Because when we're putting together corporate praise and worship, when we're, when we're doing our own uh, worship at home, we can do whatever we like. If we feel happy, we can sing a happy song. If we feel sad, we can sing a mellow song. But when we come together corporately, our hearts are invested in what we're doing. And I've seen some people, when they, when they put together a song, they'll sing it and get everyone invested in it, and they'll sing that song almost as a worship set all in itself. And it's like, wow, we started off here, we got really high in the things of God, and then we came down again, and now we're all mellow again. And then they start the next song, and they go like this. And by the time you've had four songs, which might be ten minutes each, and you get to the end, you flip a naked. You've been working, and somebody goes, oh, let's sing another song. And what happens? People start sitting down. People start thinking about lunch. People start thinking about all these things because we've sung the verse and then the chorus and then the verse and then the verse and then the verse and then the chorus, chorus, chorus. And then we just sing a little bit of a hook line and then we finish. We've, and then we do the same thing for the next song where actually, spiritually, we're doing these highs and lows, but emotionally, we're getting tired. And a lot of people don't actually think about what's happening with people's emotions and and what spiritually is happening when, with our praise and worship. And so what we need to do is actually realise that our praise and worship is a set. It goes together. It's the whole thing's, you know, 15 minutes long or 20 minutes long, 40 minutes long, whatever your church, you know, sets apart. For us, we kind of have two praise songs and then a worship song, or sometimes it's a bit of a transition song. It, it's worshipy, but it might not be a real worship song. And then after the preaching, if announcements hasn't gone too long, we might actually um, be able to worship for a full 15 minutes after church, which is two or three songs, where we can actually stay there a long time. So really what happens is, um, if the band's been getting together, and they're cranking, they've, they've rehearsed for an hour before church, you know, emotionally, they're on a high. They're starting up here. But if they start praise up here, when people are walking in from, oh my God, I just had to get out of bed. The, the plane here is so big to miss one another. The band starts here and shoots off, mate, everyone's just going to be bored. And they're just going to phase out. They're not going to join in on what's going on. Everyone's jumping around looking mental. And people are going to look at that and they're going to call it hype. Mm. They're going to say, you know what, they're, this is just hype. This church is all about hype. And it's not hype. They've actually been here for an hour. They've got to that place. But to bring people along in corporate worship, we all actually kind of have to start together. We've got to rein in how we feel, and we've got to kind of start down here. If we start right up there, we're, we're actually missing our people, and we're actually doing them a bit of a disservice. And uh, let's not push the light away. And, and we need to actually start together. So our first praise song if it starts really well and it's first chorus, first chorus, first chorus, we can keep it up high and we don't have to finish again. We don't have to finish the song. The, the, the drummer keeps playing and we start singing, you know, the, the bridge, the verse, the chorus of the next song and we go straight in. It's almost like the same song. We can hold it off there for a while, get to a certain peak emotionally where, wow, we're just going great. 
and then we just start singing a worship song. So we slow things down a bit, and then in worship, our hearts just explode and we get right off into the things of God. And then suddenly says, right, 15 minutes is up, you've got to stop worship now. <laughs> Bang! You suddenly come crashing down, and everyone just goes, oh my gosh, that was so rude. They feel potentially violated, because you just left them hanging. And they had this massive drop. If we're going to bring people down into a place that they're ready to hear the word and all of those things, we've actually got to kind of plan this thing a little. And we've actually got to land people nicely when we finish, you know. And a lot, a lot of time that might be, you know, there might be all kinds of things happening in here. It might be we've seen the, bird, the chorus over and over again. There might be a, a bridge line that you rotate, a key, a hook line that you, that you go on. And, and, and people might be singing their own songs and, and you might actually get come back to land where you go, well, right, let's start singing the chorus again and you kind of finish out with a chorus and then you might just play for a little or hey, let's just, let's just rest in the Lord's presence for a little while and, and just sing your own songs and it almost turns into this lullaby thing of where, you know, people are just relaxing and resting. There's not, no singers are singing. It's really quite sparse and empty. And it's, it's just really mellow and people are just relaxing. And then you might just come in and sing the last half of the chorus again. And then you finish that last chorus and then you finish. And then you go into, you know, oh, you know, the announcement guy gets up and prays. He goes, wow, isn't worship just great today? Lord, we just want to thank you. And, and we, and that is what praise and worship can look like. If, if our worship accelerates after, after praise, that actually turns into what they call high praise. But it's worship. So worship and praise, um, I, I talked about that last week. If you're watching this video, then look at last week's video. But um, worship, true worship comes out of thanksgiving to God. And thanksgiving from God happens because we've been meditating on Him and, we, and, it, and it turns to this love factor. It goes from appreciation to actually love. So appreciation is where we get thanks from, thanksgiving. But to have real praise of God and, and worship of God actually has to come out of a love base, which happens because we've been meditating on what He's done for us. Lord, thank you for this. Thank you. you always, you always, hang on, you always, you always. And then this relationship starts to blossom and it turns into love. And that's where praise comes from. We can't really praise God if we don't appreciate God. Where people sing the words and say we praise Him, but they don't know what that is. They've never done that. They've never owned that in their heart before.